If I had to sum up this flight, I would just say, who cares about an older seat on an older plane? Just give me more of that food, please. Hi there, my name is Kevin. This channel came from a love of traveling, a love of the full process and the journey itself. I feature airline trip reports and high-end hotel reviews from all over the world. My reviews aren't sponsored by airlines or hotels, so you can be sure to get my unbiased opinion. Am I an expert? You can decide. Am I fair? Yeah, I am. Let's get into it. Welcome to Addis Ababa and good morning. I just arrived from Rome and now I'm making my way to the Shiba Cloud9 Business Class Lounge. If you'd like to know the exact fare that I paid or my next five videos in queue, please check out the description below. The lounge appeared to be a bit busy at the front desk, but once inside, it wasn't really the case. Immediately inside to the left was a space for traditional Ethiopian coffee ceremonies, though I didn't notice any on my visit to the lounge, but you can get it in multiple other parts of the airport if you're interested. The lounge was, and I, I don't really mean this in a good way or a bad way really, it was exactly as I expected. I think the design could have been a little bit better thought out, but overall it provided a variety of seating areas, but there weren't really that many options that looked too comfortable if you had a long layover. I'll note when I arrived, it was less than half full. By the time I left, I was sharing my table with someone. Now it's time for everyone's favorite moment of PR. As Ethiopian Airways surely didn't hand over the tickets to this for free, that means you, whoever you may be, are the sponsor of this video. Clicking that thumbs up button and subscribing is a great way to support the channel and it'll cost you a grand total of zero dollars. A big ol' thanks in advance. The food in general was plentiful and as you'd expect the local options were good and the continental options were not so much. They weren't bad, just super bland across the board. And trust me, they were not kidding. Here's everything that was on offer. By far the best dish was the last dish, which I believe is a version of Tebes Fear Fear because of the injera inside it. But if I'm wrong, please let me know in the comments. Injera, if you weren't familiar, is the spongy pancake like sourdough bread that is a staple of Ethiopian cuisine, serving both as the primary starch and the utensil. Heading to the gate, I couldn't help but gaze into this A350's eyes for a bit. Originally, this flight was supposed to be operated by one, but the aircraft type changed around six times before they settled on today's 777-200LR. To wrap up the Ethiopian story that I started in my last trip report, there are currently 128 passenger aircraft in their fleet, 56 of which are wide-body aircraft, including 777-300s and 200s, A350-900s, with 1,000 variants coming, as well as both Dash 8 and Dash 9 variants of the 787. They also have a further 32 aircraft on order, as well as 13 cargo-only aircraft. Now, by the number of passengers carried, the number of destinations served, the fleet size, and the revenue, Ethiopian is Africa's largest carrier and is currently towards the end of their Vision 2025 campaign, which is seeing them expand their wings and venture into other regional carriers. Boarding was set up with designated lanes and was very organized. Beyond Ethiopia, they have secondary hubs in Togo and Malawi, which serves them well in Lome to connect to their, let's say, cousin of an airline, ASCII, or a sky. With the cooperation of ASCII and the Guinean government, they're reported to be forming Guinea Airways soon. They also have a 49% stake in Malawian Airways and a 45% stake in the rebirth of Zambia Airways. You can't say that they're not working hard. In 2018, the Ethiopian government announced a program to begin privatizing some businesses, this airline being one of them, though the government would maintain a majority stake. Those plans were put on hold though in 2020 due to COVID. The airline has achieved a profit every year from 2008 until the pandemic hit, and in that same time, tripled their number of employees, increased passengers served sixfold, increased their fleet count from 35 to 126, and most impressively, increased their yearly profit 14-fold. Let's take a look at today's stats, shall we? We'd be pushing back eight minutes behind schedule and heading up to 38,000 feet for our five-hour flight south, also arriving eight minutes behind schedule. Our 777 today is 11 years old and in the past months has been doing mostly regional African routes with the occasional China or European service thrown in. I made my way on board and turned left into this four-row cabin. 
Since a lot of seat maps these days online are rarely accurate, I unfortunately got a seat with a missing window. But no worries, there were still three others, one benefit of this layout. The cabin has a total of 28 lie flat seats in a 232 layout, which means that there is that dreaded middle seat in business class. Note that as I mentioned, row 4 is missing a window, but otherwise it's a pretty straightforward layout, with all the seats being near identical. With their very distinctive fixed and curvy outer armrests, you'll find these seats on a whole bunch of different airlines and aircraft, from Air China A330s, to Lot Polish Airlines 787s, to Turkish A330s and 777s, Air India 787s and 777s, the list goes on. The seats are showing their age due to the technology that was incorporated into them, but otherwise the seats are in very good condition and extremely clean just like my last flight. Under the footrest ahead is a cavernous compartment for your carry-on, and under the armrest there's a universal outlet, USB plug, remote, and water bottle holder. The armrest itself also rises to serve as a bit of a privacy barrier when the seat is flat. Seat adjustments were intuitive, and I told you that was a deep cubby. The headphones, pillow, and blanket were all the same as my last flight. The headphones are better than I expected, the pillow firm and nicely sized, and the blanket functional but scratchy. Between the monitors ahead of us were cubbies to store the headphones as well. Hot towels were handed out and then the crew went through the cabin serving pre-departure drinks always led by one crew on each flight in the traditional Ethiopian dress. We pushed back and had a 10 minute taxi to the runway, passing countless Ethiopian aircraft on the way, on the apron. We'd be taking off to the northeast before heading south to, well, South Africa. The spool up and take off are coming up next, along with a little bit of light reading for those of you that usually fast forward. As we flew past Lake Turkana on the Kenyan border, the service began and I had no idea what I was in store for. I started out with my favorite vintage, served alongside these biscuits that I can't quite put my finger on. They're really good, but they weren't sweet or salty, they were just biscuity? If you know what they're called, please leave it in the comments below, I'm genuinely curious. And here's the full menu. Note that the red price tags of the non-Ethiopian wines are what I put on there and are the current US retail prices for the relevant wines. Tables were set from a cart and the starter and side salad were served. Both were good, but had a very United 2017 feel to it. Then came what was the best thing, or well things, that I've ever eaten on a plane. I knew Ethiopian was known for their food on flights originating from Addis, and they certainly did not disappoint. All was served off of a trolley, something that I also enjoy to see. Alright, I'm gonna go from top right to bottom left and I'm gonna stick to the English names. First up we have the spicy chicken stew, below that was the spicy minced beef stew, then the split pea stew with turmeric, 
To the left of that was the stew mixed with injera, and then finally we have the sautéed kale. Of course it was all served on top of and with injera as well, and more was available if necessary. I didn't have a favorite, it was all just really, really good. When I lived in New York, I had a very good Ethiopian restaurant near my apartment, and this brought me right back. I think it's time to book a trip, a proper trip, to Ethiopia. And then to my shock, I was asked what I wanted for my main course. I thought, as I think everyone would think, that this was the main course, that we were to choose between the Ethiopian menu or the Western menu. But no, you could have both and they were offering it to everyone. Physically, I couldn't. Somehow, there was room for banana cake and a cup of coffee, though. After all, I did have another flight to catch after this one. The same assortment of movies were on offer as my last flight, though on a much older system which could have been a bit more responsive. Similar to my last flight, the bathrooms were kept clean throughout and stocked with some essentials. The amenity kit was also the same as the last flight, though this time in bright cherry red. I'll say again, I love the branded stuff, and literally everything inside was branded, so for that I really did enjoy this kit, but they are just really cheap feeling. As we crossed into South African airspace, we began our descent and left these beautiful blue skies behind. We'd be approaching the massive city of Johannesburg from the north before pulling a UE and landing from the south. Unfortunately, today it was a big bowl of hazy soup. Similar to deep South American routes, long-haul aircraft tend to spend almost all day on the ground so that their flights are timed to be overnight in both directions. This being one of the primary reasons why flights between North America and deep South America, as well as between Europe and South Africa, have always been disproportionately expensive. One last view of our Ethiopian bird and then I caught a glimpse of my ride out of South Africa. You'll catch those Singapore videos coming up in around two weeks after this video. I'm going to go clear immigration and drop my bags for my next flight to Cape Town on South African Airways, which is my next video coming up. Let's check out the flip-flop score. As I said a few times already, the food was absolutely incredible, but overall the service and experience in general was relatively pretty great as well. I'd love to fly Ethiopian again, if I could nail down one of their newer business class seats that is. I'll see you next time on a shocking little flight, shocking in a good way.